Sonnet 148 O oh me, what eyes have love put in my head, which hath no correspondence with true sight? Or, if they have, where is my judgment fled, that censures falsely what they see aright? If that be fair, whereon my false eyes doubt, what means the world to say it is not so? If it be not, then love doth well denote. Love's eye is not so true as all men's, no. How can it? Oh, how can love's eye be true, that is so vexed with watching and with tears? No marvel, then, though I mistake my view, and the sun itself sees not till heaven clears. O cunning love, with tears thou keep'st me blind, lest eyes well seeing thy foul faults should find. William Shakespeare After dinner, 1 August We found the dinosaur bones in the swamp behind Alec's house. The first bones, who must have been four legs, made great swords, clacking sharply with each collision, whistling when swung overhead. The skull, almost intact, and big enough for Alec to crawl inside, echoed to his chants, I am the dinosaur's brain, while Felix and I laughed. The ribs, after a little digging, rose out of the muck like a giant claw, ringing sharply in the twilight when Felix banged them with the foreleg. Alec wrapped the skull with small stones, and I blew into a horn-shaped skin. It must have been a claw. The moon rose, and clouds blew off the black, black sky. Alec bellowed, and we hooted and cawed until Alec's mom yelled from atop the stone wall at the edge of his yard, Hey! And silence draped the night like a magician's cape. How would you like it? She said. If dinosaurs dug up your bones and started playing with them! I thought, if I threw the claw like a dagger, I could take out her... But I lost my nerve. Now! She said. Start burying them! When I get back, I want everything as it was. She jumped off the wall, disappeared into the darkness, and we went to the work. Hail began to rain on us, taking off the bones, digging off our heads. By the time we'd finished and rushed inside, a layer of mini white meteors covered everything. I moved that spring. When I drove back years later, they were gone. Alec, the house, the swamp, the bones. By Jack Powers. Dead Cow. From a distance, the herd, slow spinning galaxy. Then this, red brown splotch, lone against the grass. He cranks the tractor, drags her to a corner. Her sisters chew, piled with cast off trailer tires. She is kerosene, lit, becomes briefly fire blossom. What killed her oxidizes till she gutters out, smolders, three days. Buzzards stay away. Insects wait for rain. Windblown. Bone. In six months she is pasture gall. Next year. Welt. By Nick Norwood. Acteon. The hounds. You know them all by name. You fostered them from pure blind whelps at their dam's teats. You have come to know the music of their yelps. High strung Anthe, the bridled bitch. The blue tick coated Philomel and freckled Chloe, who would fetch a pretty price if you would sell. All fleet of foot and swift to scent, inexorable once on the track. Like angry words you might have meant, but do not mean and can't take back. There was a time when you would brag how they would bray and rend apart the hopeless belling from a stag. You falter now for the foundered heart. Desires you nursed of a winter night. Did you know then why you bred them? Whose needling milk teeth used to bite the master's hand that leashed and fed them? By A. E. Stallings Reading Exodus The thing about the Old Testament is that, at least metaphorically, God is balls. If Pharaoh can't make up his mind fast, he's looking at a world of hurt. You don't think it's time to let my people go? Well, maybe it's time for me to open a whole can of frogs and boils, asshole. That's the way for you. A guy who wears the pants in the family. Sometimes I fantasize about saying to the woman I married, Let my people go, or frogs will multiply in your $800 Italian motorcycle boots. By my people, I mean primarily me. But if history is any lesson, that would, lead to, that would only lead to years in the wilderness, not to mention an unnecessary sacrifice of children. As a minor prophet once said, Wherever you are, there you are. Whether that's turning circles in the desert for 40 years, or paying a mortgage in the suburbs and making small talk on a date night. Remember the story of a golden calf? 
when all the people took off their wedding rings, thinking they would get a second chance at love. They danced and threw their lives into the fire. Look at the poor bastards there around the flames, faces glowing, while Yahweh gathers himself on the mountaintop. They feel the desert on their backs. They feel the sky is ready to collapse. Look at them. They're dancing. By Craig von Ruyen. Afterlife. And then I rose to the dazzle of light, to the pine trees plunging and righting themselves in a furious wind, to have died and come back again, raw, crackling, and the numbness stunned. That clumsy pushing and wheeling inside my chest, that ferocious upturn, I give myself to it. Why else be in a body? Something reaches inside me, binds the pocket that sued itself shut, turns it precipitously out into the air. By China Block. Letter from Limbo. Like smoke in a jar, rumors circulate about a denizen called Back, or Up. I've never seen one pack, never observed an exit, although occasionally a greenish, as I remember green, cone of queasy light will surround one who will then nearly vanish or diminish in a way, since everything occurs here all at once, so please excuse my frequent gaps of tense. I can't convey or offer evidence except, as I say, rumors of clandestine calls for volunteers. But such green could be an aura that precedes arrival. I'm sure you understand our dilemma, our collective blackout of comings and goings. How came I here? Did I appear? I only know I live. By Jean-Marie Pilmont. Those winter Sundays. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. Then, with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday, weather made him blanked fires blaze. I'm starting that one again. Those winter Sundays. Sundays, too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue-black cold. Then, with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday, weather made banked fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house. Speaking indifferently to him, who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well, what did I know? What did I, what did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? By Robert Hayden. A Farm Picture Through the ample open door of the peaceful country barn, a sunlit pasture field, with cattle and horses feeding, and haze and vista, and the far horizon fading away. By Walt Whitman. How to meditate. Lights out. Fall. Hands clasped. Into instantaneous ecstasy like a shot of heroin or morphine. The gland inside of my brain discharging the good glad fluid. Holy fluid as I hap down and hold all my body parts down to a dead stop trance, healing all my sick, sick, sicknesses, erasing all not even the shred of a I hope you or a loony balloon left in it, but the mind blank, serene, thoughtless. When a thought comes a springing from afar of its held forth figure of image, you spoof it out, you spuff it out, you fake it, and it fades. And thought never comes, and with joy you realize for the first time, thinking's just like not thinking, so I don't have to think anymore. By Jack Kerouac. 